I am a third year undergraduate student of the Department of Computer Science and Engineering in a three-day course, uh, and I'm a student of Indian Institute of Technology. Kadam. This is part two of the video series on matrices, which is chapter three of class 12 NCRT maths. And part one, I think I left up to question number 19 of XS report. So we'll be proceeding with question number 20, and I hope that you remember what we did in the first part. Right. Question number 20 says that the bookshop of a particular school has a, a, has 10 dozen chemistry books, right? 8 dozen physics books and 10 dozen economics books. Their selling prices are 80, 60, and 40 each, respectively. Find the total amount the bookshop will receive from selling all the books using market. 120 chemistry books, you have 80 physics books, and you have 100, uh, wait a minute, uh, you have 20 to 96 physics books, and you have 12, uh, again, you have 120 economics books, right? I'm using C for chemistry, P for physics, and E for economics. The points are for each book, or if they are for a dozen books, right? So uh, just, and we are given that the selling prices are 80, uh, 60, and 40 each, right? So each meaning we are given for a single book. So now you have this being, uh, this being your books, this being the books, and uh, their respective prices. Over here, right? Uh, you have this to be 80, this to be 60. Uh, you have to find the total number the bookshop is going to receive from selling all the books using matrix algebra, right? So basically, you have to figure out a way to multiply this with this, this with this, and this with this, and add them, right? And you know that uh, in the matrix form, a row vector into a column vector, or a row matrix into a column matrix, this is going to yield you a single value, right? Because this is going to be uh, n cross 1, wait, this is going to be, uh, I'm sorry, this is going to be 1 cross n. This is going to be n cross 1. Uh, this n and this n are going to match. Uh, if they match, you have a defined product. And you are going to be left with a matrix of 1 cross 1 order, right? That is going to be this, which is a single value. So uh, since this is the case, you're going to represent your books as a vector, uh, as a row of matrix. You are going to represent the prices as a column matrix and you are going to just multiply these two to find your resultant matrix which is going to be the total amount that the bookshop is going to receive. All right? That is, uh, that is basically the uh, theory behind this question. Right? And finally, what you have to do is just substitute the values into uh, each of these. Uh, total amount received, right? R, E, C, B, V. In order in the mood to actually write the whole thing. So now, finally, what we're going to do is we're going to get the answer, right? Uh, the books are going to be written as 120. Uh, then you are going to have 96. Then again, you're going to have 120, right? This is going to be multiplied. So uh, I'll write this as A, which is going to be my resultant matrix. It's going to be the books multiplied by their respective prices. That is 80, 60, and 40, right? Since this is going to be the order of C, P, and E, we have to give uh, the column matrix in the order of C, P, and E only. Right? We can't uh, interchange E and C or something because uh, that is going to throw off your right. So this is going to be the uh, right order matrix for what to get. This is going to be equal to the one cross one matrix of uh, 120 into 80 plus 96 into 60 plus 120 into 40, right? This is basically 120 squared plus, this is 96 times 60, it's going to be 5760, right? And we all know that, uh, and I've written 120 squared because it is 120 times 80 plus 40, that is going to be 120 times 120, that's 120 squared, right? Which is going to be 14400 plus 5760, right? As a singleton matrix, which is going to be, uh, this what 19, 21, uh, 20, right? 20,160. And just adding the rupees because that is the uh, implied units because this is going to be cost per book, that's rupees per book, and this is going to be in the units of books. So it's going to be uh, each of these is going to have the units of rupees. And so I'm just uh, just leaving it implied over here. I'm writing it explicitly over here. Uh, the total amount uh, received is going to be equal to rupees 20,160. Then going ahead to 21 and 22, we are given uh, some data over here, right? Uh, assume that X, Y, Z, W, and P are five matrices, right? And X has the order 2N, Y has the order 3K, Z has the order 2P, 
W has the order N3 and P has the order P cross K. And now we have this 21, the restriction on NKP so that PY plus WY is going to be defined, R, right? So we have uh, for 21, we have the product PY plus WY. Remember that for multiplication to happen, uh, if, right, so for multiplication to happen, we said that this, this value has to be equal to this value, right? So the second, the, uh, this of P, that is N, right? Because uh, P is going to be two cross N and Y is going to be, what? Uh, y is going to be three cross K, right? Three cross K, right? So we have the fact that n and 3 have to be equal, right? So n is equal to 3 is a first constraint, right? I'll just uh, write 1, 2, 3 over here because I don't know how many constraints are there. But firstly, uh, you have that n is equal to 3 from this. Again, the uh, rules of matrix product state that for w and y again, w is going to be n cross 3 and y is going to be 3 cross k and this and this have to be equal, right? Since 3 is equal to 3, you don't have any other constraint, right? Because uh, N and K, frankly, nobody cares about. Uh, remember that over here, right? You are going to be left with um, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, W. K is going to be equal to 3. It's not N equaling 3, it's K equaling 3. I'm very sorry for that. This is K equaling 3. And then finally, remember that PY, the uh, PY, if PY is equal to some Q, let's say, right? then Q is going to have the order P cross K, right? So uh, Q has the order P cross three, because we know that K is limited to three, K is equal to three, K has to be equal to three for this to be defined, right? And since this whole thing is defined, then uh, each of these things has to be defined, right? Because if something is undefined over here, then the whole thing becomes undefined. So now we have K equals three, and you have the resultant matrix being P cross K, that is P cross three, right? Similarly, if WY, is equal to R, let's say, then R is going to have the order N plus K, right? Which is again, N plus three. So now remember that for an addition to happen, the both these matrices have to have the same order, right? Therefore, we have P cross three is going to be equal to N plus three, right? Or P is going to be equal to N, right? It's going to be equal to N because these are, uh, these are actually orders. You can't really equate them because they are in numbers, right? They're orders, they're equivalent. That means that P is equal to N and three is equal to three. So three equals three is a tautology. It all, it's always true. You have uh, the second condition that is P equals N, right? As I said, you didn't have a third condition. So uh, these are the two conditions that we have to work with. Now we have K is three and P is N. That is, uh, remember, you can't say that, uh, you can say that P is arbitrary, but since P is equal to N, you also have to comment on the nature of N, right? You can just leave out N and say that just P is arbitrary. So C is, uh, is actually true, but it's not the most correct answer. K equals three and P equals N is going to be the most correct. If the, uh, if, if N is equal to P, then the order of the matrix seven X minus five is there. Remember that having a scalar uh, multiplied to a matrix does not change the matrix order. So seven X is going to be of the same order uh, if I uh, write small o as the order of uh, a matrix, right? Uh, then order of seven x is going to be uh, you know, is going to be equal to the order of x, right? Similarly, the order of uh, this is what phi z is going to be equal to the order. This means that seven x is going to be a matrix of order. Uh, what is it? Two cross n, right? And phi z is going to be a matrix of order Z that is going to be two plus P. Therefore, if N is equal to P, then your, uh, the final matrix is going to be of the same order of seven X and five Z. That's going to be uh, two cross N that is equal to any one of these is going to be your answer. That is option B. Now we are going to exercise 3.3 that deals with the transpose and some of the property, right? So what's the transpose? Transpose is basically uh, take this, uh, take, so uh, take this matrix. Uh, this matrix, if you write, uh, this is this is a row-wise matrix, right? One tan alpha by two minus tan alpha by two and one. 
if I write this as 1, uh, this tan alpha beta, minus tan alpha beta and 1, this can be either minus a, right? Uh, this is going to be, uh, this is going to be a minus i. So if I convert each row into a column, right? If I write this as uh, instead of 1 tan alpha beta over here, I write this 1 tan alpha beta and this coming over here, I'm converting each row to each column, right? Then I call this matrix as a transpose, right? This is called a transpose. Uh, this is called a transpose matrix to be honest, but yeah. Uh, the operation that we carry out is called the transpose. You represent this by the uh, by the superscript. Uh, this is just formal, more formally. What you do is, uh, if your A is going to be A i j, right, uh, I'll just zoom in a bit. If your A is going to be A i j, right, the uh, matrix of all elements A i j, then your A transpose or A dash is going to be equal to A j i of the order n cross n, right? You're going to interchange the columns and the rows. That's basically what a transpose is, all right? Uh, this this is going to be the formative. Just uh, look at these examples for uh, more examples on transposes and how you deal with the orders and etc. Right? Because uh, sometimes when you deal with transposes, you forget about the order and you start multiplying and dividing with the original order, which uh, makes no sense first of all and B leads you to the wrong answer. Right? So that's uh, that's actually very important. Now we are going to deal with the properties of transposes. That's that a double transpose is equal to a no transpose, right? A double dash is going to be A. Uh, K times A dash is going to be K, uh, K A times, uh, K A the whole transpose is going to be K into A transpose, right? A plus B the whole transpose is A transpose plus B transpose. And A B the whole transpose is going to be B transpose into A transpose. And then you have symmetric and skew symmetric matrices which deal with the transpose uh, property, right? A symmetric matrix is going to be a matrix which is uh, equivalent under the transpose uh, operation, right? Which means that if A is going to be equal to A transpose, then this matrix A or this matrix A transpose, whatever, they are the same, is going to be called a symmetric matrix, right? Else, if your A is going to be the negative of A transpose, right? Then you call this a skew symmetric matrix. Now, uh, just remember that any matrix B an arbitrary matrix, uh, it's going to be arbitrary. It can always be uh, represented as a combination of some matrix, uh, of some matrix and some other matrix of which one is uh, totally symmetric and the other is going to be skew symmetric. This is the property. Uh, this is going to be an arbitrary square matrix. So this property says that any arbitrary square matrix can be expressed as a sum of a symmetric and a skew symmetric matrix. This becomes useful when you solve some uh, very hard problems on matrices, right? Where uh, if you use the symmetricity of the skew symmetricity property, then your life will become a hell lot easier. But uh, you can't apply it on an arbitrary square matrix, but you can only apply it on symmetric or skew. Then what you do is you basically just uh, dissolve the whole matrix into the sum of two matrices, which are uh, both, which are of which one is symmetric and the other is going to be skew. You write it in this form. Right, where A is going to be equal to half of A plus A dash plus half of A minus A dash, right? Because A plus A dash is going to be a, a symmetric matrix, right? Because it's going to be the sum of a matrix and its own transpose, right? And A minus A dash is going to be 100% skew symmetric because the diagonal elements are going to be zero and the other elements are going to be, proof is pretty interesting. Right? If you want, you can just, uh, you can just take a paper, try to, you know, uh, do a generalized proof of salt. Uh, you can also take it at face value because it's pretty easy. And the transpose of each of the following matrices. Right? I'm not going to waste time uh, drawing the original matrix. I'm just going to go ahead and draw the transpose matrices. And I'm going to discuss the orders, right? First thing, first question, uh, first subpart is going to have an order. Uh, the original matrix is going to have an order of 3 plus 1, right? Because it has three rows and a single column. This column matrix. So your transpose, uh, let this be A. Then A transpose is going to be a row matrix of uh, elements 5, 0 0.5, that's half, and minus 1. All right. And this is going to have an order. Uh, let the matrix be B. It's, it is 1 minus 1, 2, 3. Therefore, a B transpose is going to be a 2 cross 2 matrix again because it's square. And uh, even if you interchange the rows and columns, the numbers are going to be the same, right? Because it's a square matrix. N is equal to N. So we have uh, this to be 1 minus 1. You have this to be 2, 3, right? This is going to be the transpose of. And the third question, or uh, the third subpart, let this matrix be C. 
then you have C transpose. Since this is a square matrix, this again going to be a matrix of order three cross three, right? And the elements are going to be minus one, five, six, root three, five, six, two, three, minus one, right? Notice that the diagonal elements never change, right? The diagonal elements are always fixed under transpose. This actually, that property is actually pretty useful when you want to calculate the trace of a matrix, right? The trace of a matrix are a trace of a matrix TR of a matrix A is defined as uh, the sum of the diagonal elements of A. Uh, diagonal. So uh, since you don't have, uh, since the diagonal elements do not change under transpose, the trace of A is going to be equal to the trace of A transpose, right? That's a useful property because sometimes you're asked trace of A transpose and you don't need to do the transpose operation and then find out what the diagonal elements are. It's just direct find from or sometimes you are not given the matrix and you are asked uh, as a question regarding the trace and you can use this property to solve it. Just an interesting bit of uh, that is uh, question number one. Then going to question number two. If A is this matrix and B is this matrix, verify that A plus B the whole transpose is going to be A transpose. So we have A plus B the whole transpose, right? Uh, first thing. So let us find A plus B first. That is going to be uh, this, I'm just going to directly add the two matrices over here. I'm not uh, writing them again, right? So A plus B is going to be minus one minus four plus minus five. You have two plus one, that is three. You have three minus five, that is minus two, right? And the whole matrix is going to be three plus three because each of these, is, uh, the second row is going to have a six, going to have a nine. It's again going to have a nine. The third row is going to have a minus one. This is going to be four and this is going to be two, All right? Therefore, your A plus B transpose is going to be a three plus a matrix again, right? Because it's a square matrix, uh, the order does not change, right? It's going to be minus five, three, two, minus five, three, minus two over here, first column. Then you're going to have six, nine, and nine in the second column. The third column is going to have minus one, four. This is going to be A, trans a plus B, the whole transpose, right? This is going to be your RHS, that is the right. Uh, Wait, uh, this is going to be the LHS. Now the R has A transpose plus B transpose. That is equal to uh, a three plus a matrix plus another three plus a matrix, right? Because A transpose is three plus three, B transpose is also three plus three, right? And A transpose is going to be minus one, two, three, five, seven, nine, minus two, one, and one. And over here is going to be minus four, one, minus five, it's going to be one, two, zero, right? And it's going to be one. And finally, I just zoom out a bit so that you can see both the matrices. They add to give me another three cross three matrix, right? Which has uh, minus five over here. This is a three, so minus two. This is going to be a six. This is going to be a nine. This is going to be a nine. And this is going to be a minus one. This is going to be a four. And this is going to be a two. Right, and you can see that this matrix and this matrix are basically right. Therefore, this is R, that is L. Therefore, LHS is equal to RHS and the second subpart that is A minus B the whole transpose. So, we have A minus B the whole transpose over here, right? A minus B the whole transpose that is going to be a uh, uh, first way. Uh, this is going to be the LHS, right? and I'm going to tackle the LHS. So first of all, we find out what is A minus B. Again, I'm not writing the matrix, uh, I'm just going to directly draw it. Right, this is a three plus a matrix again because each of these is going to be three plus three. Uh, I calculate A minus B as minus one minus of minus four, that is going to be three. That's minus one plus four, right? Then you have two minus one, that is one. You have three plus five, that is eight. And then you have five minus one, four, seven minus two, five, but I write a three. Uh, seven minus two, that's a five. And then zero, that is nine. Finally, you have minus two minus one, that's minus three. You have one minus three, that's minus two. And you have one minus one, right? Therefore, your A minus B, the whole transpose, right, is going to be your LHS L. And that is equal to, again, a three plus a matrix with the elements three, four, minus three. Then you have one, five, minus two. And then you have eight, nine, and zero, right? Three one eight four five nine minus three minus two zero. So this is going to be L. 
on the right hand side, you have A transpose minus B transpose. That is going to be, right? Since I have A transpose and B transpose over here, I'll just directly, uh, you know, subtract these two matrices, right? Instead of, you know, writing them down again. Uh, so there's again, I'm going to get a three plus the matrix. Uh, kids also, just a heads up. And so directly I'm writing this. You can't say that, right? You have to write in the matrices, even if it takes it. So uh, we're going ahead with the question. Right, it's going to be minus one minus uh, minus one plus four. That's three. And it's going to be two minus one. That is one. Then it's going to be three plus five. That is eight over here. Then it's going to be five minus one. That's four. It's going to be seven minus two. That is five. It's going to be nine minus zero. That is nine. And finally, you have minus two minus one. That's going to be minus three. You have one minus three. That is going to be minus two. And then you have one minus one. Again, that is zero, right? This is going to be your RHS, that is R. Now you can see that these two matrices are equal. Therefore, LHS is going to be equal to your RHS. Therefore, F proved that the condition holds. If A dash is this matrix and B is going to be this matrix, verify that A plus B the whole dash is going to be A dash plus B dash. And A minus B the whole dash is going to be A dash minus. Over here you were given A and B. Over here you are giving uh, you are being given A dash and B. So the first thing we have to do is figure out what is A. Right. Because only and only then can we uh, can we do this? Because on the left hand side you have A and B. On the right hand side you have A dash and B. Both ways uh, using A dash to figure out A and using A to figure out A dash is going to be the same. But uh, so we have A being uh, since this is a three cross two matrix. Right, you have A to be a two plus three matrix of elements P4, minus one, two, and zero, one. So we have uh, A plus B, right? I'm going to tackle the LHS first. For that, I need A plus B. That is going to be a two plus three matrix, all right? Of three plus minus one, that is going to be uh, plus two. Then you have two minus one, that is one. Then you have one plus zero, that is one. And over here you have a five, you have a four, and you have a four. And so you have a transpose, a three cross two matrix of elements two, one, one, and five, four, four. This is going to be your LHS. L. On the RHS, you have A transpose plus B transpose. That is going to be a uh, wait, uh, this is going to be two three cross two matrices, right? That is are uh, three four minus one zero and two one plus the transpose of b again that's a two or uh, three cross two matrix or uh, this is going to be a three cross two matrix of order uh, it, this is going to be a three cross two matrix and it's going to have the elements minus one two one just adding them both you can basically see that you're going to get a three cross two matrix right and you're going to have the elements two or uh, this is going to be five this one this Four, this is going to be one, and again, this check that uh, this R, right? And you can see that this matrix is going to be equal to this matrix, right? Therefore, LHS is equal to RHS, therefore, verified. And then you have the second subpart, again, that is A minus B, the whole dash is A dash minus B dash. So since I figured out A already, right, I'm going to directly write A minus B. That is, that is going to be a two-rossy matrix with elements or uh, since three minus one right uh, I can just do it directly from here. So we have the elements three minus minus one that is going to be four. Then you have minus one. You have minus one minus two that is going to be minus three. And you have zero minus one that is going to be minus one. Right. Second you have four minus one that is going to be three. You have two minus two that is going to be zero and one minus three that is going to be minus two. Right. That is going to be minus uh, you are finally left with LHS equaling A minus B the whole dash or the whole transpose. Right? A dash is going to be another symbol for transpose. So this is going to be a matrix of order 3 cross 2 with the elements 4 minus 3 minus 1 and 3 is 0 minus 2. Now you, uh, you have the left hand side matrix and the matrix on the right hand side is not that easy to figure out. Uh, it's not that Difficult to figure out, and it is actually pretty easy, right? You have a transpose minus b transpose. Since you are already given a transpose, 
and you have figured out B transpose over here, then I'm going to directly subtract these two. And again, you're going to be left with a T cluster matrix with the values 3 minus minus 1, that's going to be 4. Then you have 4 minus 1, that's going to be 3. You have minus 1 minus 2, that's going to be minus 3. You have 2 minus 2, that's going to be 0. You have 0 minus 1, that's going to be minus 1. And finally, you have 1 minus 3, that's going to be minus 2. You can see that these two matrices are equal. Therefore, your LHS is going to be equal to your RHS, right? Therefore, you have verified the solution. Now, going to question number 4. If A dash is equal to and B is equal to minus 1, 0, 1, and 2, find A plus 2 be the whole dash, right? I'm not writing uh, what is, uh, I'm not writing these two matrices again. Uh, I think uh, writing them down would be better, right? So I'll just keep my words right now. I'll write these two matrices again because uh, that's going to be easier for me to explain, right? So since you're given A transpose, I have to take a transpose of this to get A back, right? Because for the fact that A transpose, the whole transpose is going to be A. So I will take a transpose of this. That is going to be minus 2, 1, 3, and 2. This is going to be my A. And my B is a matrix minus 1, 0, 1, 2. So now I have uh, A plus 2B to figure out. Then I'm going to stepwise. I have to figure out A plus 2B the whole transpose. For that, I need to figure out what is A plus 2. That is going to be uh, pretty easy to figure out. That is uh, minus 2 plus 2 into minus 1, right? This is going to be 1 plus 2 into 0. This is going to be 3 plus 2 into 1. And this is going to be 2 plus 2 into 2, right? That is again, uh, this is going to be minus 2 minus 2, that's minus 4. This is going to be 3 plus 2, that is 5. This is going to be 1. And this is going to be 2 plus 4, that is 6. Therefore, A plus 2B, the whole transpose is going to be Again, uh, since this is a two cross two matrix, the transpose is also going to be a two cross two matrix with elements minus four, one. Uh, this is going to be plus five and six. Now we have question number five, which I finished question number four. For the matrix is A and B, verify that A is a whole dash is going to be B dash A dash, right? First thing, you have a row matrix or a column matrix, and I'm not writing A and B down. All right. So uh, A, B, is going to be, and remember that this is an n cross 1 matrix and this is a 1 cross n matrix, right? And the product of this is going to be an n cross n matrix and not a 1 cross 1 matrix, all right? A row into a column is going to be a 1 cross 1, but a column into a row is going to give you an n cross n, all right? So your a cross b, uh, a, b, the product is going to be an n cross n matrix or better yet, it is going to be uh, 3 cross 3 matrix, right? because n is 3 over here, right? With the elements, 1 into one, minus 1, that's going to be minus 1. This is going to be 2. Uh, this is going to be 2. This is going to be 1. This is going to be 4. This is going to be minus 8. This is going to be minus 4. And this is going to be minus 3. This is going to be 6. And this is going to be, that is it. Since you have AB, then you can find uh, AB, the whole dash, that is going to be your L left hand side, which is the matrix, take across the matrix again, of the elements, minus 1, 1, 4, minus 8, minus 4, minus 3, 6, and 3. All right, this is going to be your result. On the RHS, you are going to have the expression. It is B dash times A dash, right? B dash times A dash. This column matrix, that is minus 1, 2, 1, into the row matrix 1 minus 4, right? Which gives you the 3 cross 3 matrix of minus 1 times this, that is 1, 4, wait a minute, this minus 1, 4, minus 3. Then you have 2 times this, that is going to be 2, minus 8, 6, and 1 times this, that is going to be 1, minus 4, and notice that this is going to be equal to, therefore, your LHS is equal to RHS, therefore, verified. I've taken to writing on verified. I don't know why. What's the five seconds here? There? Right. Question number two, which has, again, you have a column and a row matrix, right? But here is 0, 1, 2, and 1, 5, 7. So, uh, your first thing, you figure out what is AB. That is going to be a 3 cross matrix again. 
because we are dealing with a three cross one and a one plus three matrix, right? AB is going to be zero times this, that is zero, zero, zero. And then you have one times this, that is one, five, seven. And you have two times this, that is going to be two, 10, 14. Uh, take each element of the column, multiply the uh, row, uh, multiply each element of the row with that element of the column, right? And uh, put that row, right? Put the uh, row matrix that you have just obtained into the row from which you remove the column element, right? So if, uh, if you are going to take one over here, right? Multiply one into this row matrix, that's going to be 157 itself. And plug this uh, at the place from which you took one, right? That is the second row. So you plug that uh, row matrix, that's 157, into the second row. Similarly, if you take two, right? Multiply two with this, that's going to, be, uh, that's going to give you two, 10, and 14, right? And plug that value over here because two is in the third row. Right? You can do that because uh, that is going to be, uh, you know, a shortcut method of building the... So with this, we have AB. And so you can find AB dash, that is going to be the value of your LHS. That is, again, a three plus a matrix of elements 0, 0, 0, 1, 5, 7, 2, 10, 14. And uh, I mean, from here you can uh, actually see that this is going to be 0, 1, 2 into 1. This is going to be 0, 1, 2 into 5. This is going to be 0, 1, 2 into 7, right? So you can basically write this as, uh, basically write this as 1, 5, 7 times 0, 1, 2. This is basically B dash times A dash, but yeah, right? uh, I'm not, uh, this, this is basically backtracking, right? But uh, I just go with the RHS equals RHS. And your RHS is going to have B dash into A dash, that is basically B dash is the transpose of 1 by 7, that is uh, the column vector 1 by 7, the column matrix 1 by 7, into the row of 0, 1, 2 of 0, 1, and 2, which is again going to give you a take class matrix, right, with elements 1 times this row, that is going to be 0, 1, 2, 5 times this row, that is going to be 0, 5, 10, and 7 times this row, that is going to be 0, 7. Notice that this matrix and this matrix are equal. Therefore, your LHS is equal to RHS and you have verified distribution, right? That's not going to be interchangeably. Or already proved verified whatever. That finishes question number five. Uh, if A is cos alpha, sin alpha, minus sin alpha, cos alpha, verify that A dash A is going to be I. Note that these kinds of matrices, right, where the transpose is the inverse, it has a special name. I just uh, figure out what that name is. It will be useful. All right. So you have A is equal to, uh, this is what? Cos alpha, sin alpha, minus sin alpha, and cos alpha, right? Therefore, your A transpose is going to be, uh, uh, your A transpose is going to be uh, cos alpha, sin alpha, minus sin alpha, and cos alpha, right? Therefore, we're going to have A A dash to be a matrix of order uh, 2 plus 2 with the elements. This is uh, cos sine into cos sine. That is going to be cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha. Or uh, the second row is going to be cos alpha sine alpha into minus sine alpha cos alpha. Right? That is going to be minus uh, cos alpha sine alpha plus sine alpha cos alpha. Again over here it's going to be what? Minus sin alpha cos alpha into this. That is going to be minus uh, cos alpha sin alpha plus sin alpha cos alpha. And the fourth uh, the fourth element is going to be uh, this multiplied by this. That is going to be sin squared alpha plus cos squared alpha. Right? This goes and becomes zero over here. And this is one. This is one. So basically this is going to be the matrix 1, 0, 0, 1, that is going to be I2, right? Therefore, A, A dash is equal to I, right? So you have verified that this is the case. Number two, if A is, uh, you are given that the A, uh, that the matrix sin alpha cos alpha minus cos alpha sin alpha is A, right? Again, you are asked to verify that A dash A is going to be equal to I. 
Notice that here a a dash, uh, proving that a a dash equals i is equivalent to proving that a dash a is going to be equal to i. Right? Why? Because notice that i transpose is going to be equal to i itself because i is perfectly symmetric. Right? So take a, uh, take the transpose of this. Uh, take the transpose of this transpose. Then you get. Uh, a dash the whole transpose is going to be a dash times a right because a dash the whole dash is going to be a so you have a dash a is going to be equal to i dash that is a dash a is going to be equal to i so proving this is equivalent to proving this sometimes what happens is a dash a is not equal to a a dash and so proving that a a dash is equal to i is not enough to prove that a dash a is equal to i you have you have to show the step that a a dash equals i proves that a dash a is equal to i Using some elementary operation, and again, this question can be proved uh, in two ways. One is this whole method that we did previously, and the other is to convert this matrix into this form. Right? How you can do that is by substituting alpha as uh, some pi by two minus x. Set. So that means that you get uh, here cos alpha, you get here sin alpha, you get here minus sin alpha, you get here a cos alpha. That brings us to a uh, form like in question number one. Since you have proved that this uh, this a shows a dash equals i, then this a should also show that a dash a is equal to i because this is going to be a trivial uh, you know this is going to be a trivial translation. But instead of doing the whole uh, this whole thing, I'll just go ahead with a straightforward approach and say that uh, since a is this, then a dash is going to be uh, sin alpha cos alpha minus sin alpha minus cos alpha I'm sorry minus cos alpha and sin alpha over here right finally a dash a is going to be equal to this times this that is uh, sin squared alpha plus cos squared alpha over here is going to be sin alpha minus cos alpha into cos alpha sin alpha that is going to be sine 2 alpha by 2 minus sine 2 alpha by 2 because sine 2 alpha is 2 sine alpha cos alpha. Uh, I'm writing this because this is more compact, right? Uh, it's easier on myself, right? Again, over here you have cos alpha sine alpha into this. That is going to be sine 2 alpha by 2 minus sine 2 alpha by 2. And over here, we are again going to have sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha. Uh, this gives you one. This gives you a zero. This again gives you a zero. This gives you a one. So therefore, a dash a is going to be equal to the matrix one zero zero one, which is i two, right? Therefore, you have proved that a dash a is going to be equal to i. Therefore, verified. All right. Question number seven. So the matrix a. Remember the definition of a symmetric matrix. Uh, that A transpose is going to be equal. So you have the matrix 1 minus 1, 5, minus 1, 2, 1, 5, 1, 3. Right. Uh, since A is given, I'll just take A transpose. That is going to be equal to 1 minus 1, 5. This is going to be minus 1, 2, and 1. This is going to be 5. This is going to be 1. This is going to be 3. And you can see that this is basically equal to what is a over because 1 is equal to 1, minus 1 is minus 1, 5 is 5, 1 uh, minus 1 is minus 1, 2 is 2, 1 is 1, 5 1 3 is 5 1 3 again, right? Therefore, it is symmetric, right? Because a dash is equal to a and that is the necessary condition, that is a sufficient condition, that is part 1. Part 2 asks you to show that the matrix a is a skew symmetric matrix. Again, we have to deal with uh, the a dash. Right, find the transpose. Again, it's a precursor matrix, so it has the precursor state transpose. That is going to be 0, 1, minus 1. Then it's going to be minus 1, 0, uh, minus 1, 0, 1. And then you have 0, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 0, 1. And you have 1, minus 1, right? That is going to be A dash. And minus A is going to be. 0, minus 1, 1. This is going to be 1, 0, minus 1. This is going to be minus 1, 1, 0. And you can see that these both are equal, right? Therefore, 
a dash is equal to minus a, which is a sufficient condition for skew symmetry. Right? Therefore, it is skew symmetric. Similarly, we have proved it. Question number eight. For the matrix one, five, six, seven, verify that a plus a dash is a skew symmetric matrix. A minus a dash is a skew symmetric matrix. Right? So let me write p is equal to a plus a dash. All right? I don't want to, you know, uh, write a plus a dash. Write p is equal to a plus a dash. So that I can solve it in this. Now, firstly, to figure out what is a dash, a is going to be one, five, six, seven. Right? Because a is one, five, six, seven. Right? Therefore, b or b is going to be equal to the sum of this and this which is 2 and you have 6 plus 5 that is 11 you have 5 plus 6 that's again 11 and you have 7 plus 7 that is 14 now take b transpose that is going to be 2 11 11 14 again right bringing this 11 over here does not make a change because these both elements are equal this is equal to b therefore a plus a dash is symmetric. For the second part, let's see equal a minus a dash. And if I have to see, I have a dash over here. And so I can basically do, uh, I can basically uh, write down the value of the matrix C. Again, that is going to be 2 cross 2 because it's a uh, elementary minus operation, difference operator. So you have uh, the same order as each of the constituent matrices. And so you're going to have a minus a dash to be this minus this, which is 1 minus 1 giving a 0, 5 minus 6 giving a minus 1, 6 minus 5 giving a 1, and 7 minus 7 giving a 0. So you can see that C dash is going to be equal to 0, uh, this is going to be 0 plus 1, minus 1, 0. This is basically minus C. Therefore, C dash is equal to minus C, skew symmetry, right? Thus, so it is done. Question number 9. Find half of a plus a dash and half of a minus 0 a b minus a 0 c minus b c 0. Uh, when you are uh, when you're doing it in the CBC boards, you have to do the long way. You are doing a competitive exam like JE or something. You have to do the short way. Uh, notice that this a over here, right, which is uh, 0 a b minus a 0 c minus b minus c 0. Right? This a, this itself is skew symmetric. Because A transpose is going to be 0 AB minus A 0 C, right? This is going to be 0 ABC. Uh, this whole thing is going to be 0. Here is ABC. Here is minus AB, minus A, minus B, minus C, right? So A transpose is going to be minus A. So A is skew symmetric, right? Remember that any matrix, uh, any square matrix can be represented as a sum of a symmetric and a skew symmetric matrix. If this itself is skew symmetric, then this is going to be 0 plus the skew symmetric matrix. This is going to be this matrix itself. Right? Therefore, uh, since you represent this as half of A plus A dash and this as half of A minus A dash, uh, you are basically going to have half of A plus A dash being 0, equaling 0, or A plus A dash being a 0 matrix and A minus A dash is going to be 2 times a or a is going to be equal to minus a dash. This is what's going to happen. So you have actually found out what is half of a plus a dash and half of a minus a dash over there. Right? Uh, this is going to be 0, this is going to be a itself. But the long way is going to be, right, uh, the longer way, this uh, this is uh, another method, analytic you want. Right? The long way is actually Finding out what is a dash first, that is basically 0, uh, this is going to be a, b, c, this is going to be 0, 0, this is going to be minus a, minus b, minus c. Uh, so you have half of a plus a dash being half of the matrix, this plus this, that's going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, right? Which is basically the matrix. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, which is basically, this is not ozone, this is the zero matrix of the third order, right? And you have 
half of a minus a dash being half of the matrix that is this minus this minus a dash that is going to be uh, 0 2a 2b minus 2a minus 2b 0 minus 2c and this is going to be plus 2c and you have 0 and this is going to be basically be 0 a b a 0 c and a minus minus b minus c and a 0 which is basically a itself so you have half of a minus a dash being a itself and half of a plus a dash being o3 or o right this is the longer method it's a little longer right but you don't need to figure out what is a dash and or do this whole work up in your competitive exam you can just basically go ahead with the fact that a itself is q symmetric so half of a plus a dash has to be zero half of a minus a dash has to be a right you can just do that and you can go ahead with the merry way question number 10. express the following matrices as some of the skew, uh, symmetric and a skew symmetric matrix all right so 10 number one is the matrix a equaling uh three five um, this is 1 minus 1, right? So a dash is going to be 3, 5, 1, minus 1, or 3, 1, 5, minus 1, whatever. Uh, your a's can then be represented as a sum of a symmetric and a skew symmetric matrix, like half of a plus a dash plus half of a minus a dash. Let this be s, let this be k. Half of a plus a dash, then s is going to be half of the matrix a plus a dash. That is going to be 6, this is 6, this is again a 6, and this is going to be minus 2, which is going to be 3 minus 1. Over here, it's a 3 and a 3. Pretty easy to see that this is symmetric. So your S is going to be the symmetric matrix. This is going to be the symmetric matrix. The other matrix K is going to be half of A minus A dash. That is, that is going to be a 0 over here, a 0 over here. This is going to be 5 minus 1 and this is going to be 1 minus 5. So this is going to be 4, this is going to be minus 4. Or you can write this as 0, 2, minus 2, and 0, right? Which you can see is uh, skew symmetric pretty easily because transposing this gives you 0, minus 2, 2, 0. This is minus of this, right? So this is going to be your skew symmetric matrix. So we have 3, 3, 3, minus 1 and 0, 2, 2, minus 2, 0. All right, uh, that takes care of the first subpart. Second subpart is going to be uh, your matrix A equaling 6 minus 2, 2, right? Minus 2, 3, minus 1, 2, minus 1. Then your A transpose is going to be equal to 6 minus 2, 2, minus 2, 3, minus 1, 2, minus 1. You can see that A is basically equal to A transpose. So A itself is symmetric, right? Therefore, expressing, expressing A as the sum of A plus zero is going to be the required representation in the form of a symmetric and a skew symmetric matrix, right? Because a zero matrix is special in the sense that uh, the zero matrix is both symmetric and skew symmetric, right? Because a matrix of zeros means that minus zero is equal to zero, right? So a dash is equal to minus uh, o dash is going to be equal to minus o is going to be equal to o. So uh, the zero matrix is both symmetric and skew symmetric. So it can uh, represent this matrix, this symmetric matrix in the form of a plus zero. This is going to be your uh, quick method, right? You don't really need to think on this for a long while and do it. But the longer method is going to be the half of a plus a dash is going to give you this metric matrix S, which is basically half times, right? this is going to be half of 12, this is minus four, this is four, then it's going to be minus four, this is going to be six, this is going to be minus two, this is going to be four, this is going to be minus two, and this is going to be six, right? Which is basically six minus two, two, minus two, two, three minus one, and minus one, three, right? That is the symmetric matrix. This is going to be symmetric. Right, this is basically a, and the skew symmetric matrix, which is half of a minus a dash, is going to be equal to k, which is basically half of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, which is going to be 
the matrix 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, which is basically O3. And that's what I've written over here. I can write this as A plus O. So this is going to be this Q symmetric matrix. So the sum of this and this is going to give you A. That is what it means. Going to the third subpart, right, where you have A equals 3, 3, minus 1. Then you have minus 2, minus 2, 1. Then you have minus 4, minus 5, and 2. Right, which means that A transpose is going to be 3, 3, minus 1 as a column. Minus 2, minus 2, 1 as a column. And minus 4, minus 5, 2 as a column. Right? The symmetric matrix S is going to be half of A plus A dash, which is half of the three cross matrix that is 6. Here is a minus 4. Here is a 4. I'm first stacking the diagonal elements because they're easy. And then you have 3 minus 2, that's going to be 1. You have minus 2 plus 3, that's going to be 1. You have minus 4 minus 1, that is going to be minus 5. Again, you have minus 4 minus 1, that is going to be minus 5. And you have 1 minus 5, that is going to be minus 4. And over here, you have minus 5 plus 1, that is again going to be minus. So you have the matrix 3, you have the matrix 3, half, uh, this plate. I just arrive this is this one, right? 3 is 0 0.5. Wait. 3 is 0 0.5 minus 2.5, right? You have a point over here. There is a 0 0.5, there is a minus 2, there is a minus 2. Then there is a minus 2.5, there is a minus 2, and there is a... This is going to be the symmetric part. That is S, which is a symmetric, right? And K, which is Q symmetric, is going to be half of A minus A dash. That is a half of... Again, the diagonal elements are all 0, 0, 0. Because A and A dash are the same like this. Then you have uh, A minus A dash, this being 5, this being minus 5. Then you have minus 1 plus 4 over here, that is going to be plus 3. And over here is going to be minus 3. And over here is going to be 1 plus 5, that is 6. And over here is going to be minus 6. 6 and minus 6. Right? Uh, which is basically 3, 0, uh, it's going to be 0. Is going to be 2.5, it is going to be 1.5. Then you have a 3, you have a 0, you have a minus 2.5, you have a minus 1.5, you have a minus 3, and you have a 0. This is going to be this Q symmetric matrix, right? And you can see that this and this added together is going to give you the original matrix. Very easy to see that, but uh, if you want to try that. Finally, fold some part. Thankfully, it's a two cross matrix. A is going to be equal to 1, 5, 1, 5, minus 1, right? That means that A transpose is going to be 1, 5, minus 1. Therefore, your symmetric matrix S, uh, S is going to be symmetric, right? It's going to be half of A plus A dash. This is basically half of a plus A dash is going to be 2, 4, 4, and 4, which is basically 1, 2, 2, and your K, which is the skew symmetric matrix, is going to be equal to half of A minus A dash, which is going to be half of A minus A dash is uh, a zero diagonal, and the first our first element is going to be 5 minus minus 1, that is 6. And this is going to be minus. So you basically have 0, 3, minus 3, and 0. You can check that adding these two is going to give you the original matrix A. Right? 2 plus 3 is 5. 2 minus 3 is minus 1. So you have 1, 5, minus 1. That's the original matrix. Right? So in question number 10, and the exercise is almost over, then we have just two questions, 7 and 12. If A and B are symmetric matrices of the same order, then AB minus BA is what? Right. So remember that a symmetric matrix is square. So you have, uh, wait a minute. So you have a question by the way. You have A and B 
of the order n cross n, right? And so a b is going to be a matrix of the order n cross n, and b a is also going to be a matrix of the order n cross n. So uh, a b minus b a is a uh, pretty much defined. There's no indefinition. Uh, there's no undefined processes being uh, going on. So you have a defined product, uh, defined sum and defined product. So we have, uh, since you are given that A and B are symmetric matrices, you have A dash being equal to A, B dash being equal to B, right? Therefore, you have AB, the whole dash being equal to B dash A dash, which is BA, right? So AB minus BA, the whole dash is going to be AB, the whole dash minus BA, the whole dash, because A plus A plus B, the whole dash is A dash plus B dash, right? And K A, the whole dash is going to be K into A dash. So this is basically a plus a minus one times BA. So using these two properties, I get uh, this, I get this, right? From this, uh, I can, from this, I can basically state that this is basically BA minus AB. Therefore, you have, uh, if this matrix is your required matrix R, then you have R, R dash is going to be equal to minus R, or R is skew symmetry. So for 11, a is the correct answer. And finally, you have question number 12. If A is cos alpha minus sin alpha sin alpha cos alpha and A plus A dash is I, then the value of alpha is. So we first write A, A dash, that is going to be cos minus sin, sin and cos. Right? So just add an alpha over here. So we have A plus A dash being 2 cos alpha, 0, 0, 2 cos alpha, equaling, this is 1, 0, 0, 1, right? Because A plus A dash equals I, right? And I is 1, 0, 0, 1, because A is going to be a 2 cos matrix. Therefore, we have the expression 2 cos alpha is going to be equal to 1, or cos alpha is equal to half, or alpha is basically pi by 3, right? Or to be more exact, alpha is 2 and pi plus minus pi by 3. It's going to be for all n belonging to. And the only value of alpha satisfying uh, this condition is going to be pi by 3. So the answer. And then uh, with this, we complete exercise 3.3. Right? Exercise 3.4 deals with invertible matrices. Right? Uh, you are you're going to deal with vertibility and the inverse matrix. So the inverse matrix is basically the matrix of, so let there be two matrices A and B, right? B is called the inverse of A if and only if A into A inverse or uh, A into B uh, instead of A inverse, I can say AB is equal to the identity matrix I on the same order of A, of course. Remember that both these matrices are going to have the same order in concept, right? Uh, only and only if A is the square matrix, is is inverse defined. Else, it's not defined. That is also true because of this identity matrix is always square. It's not, uh, it does not exist in some 2 cross 3 or 5 cross 4 form. It is always square. Understand that the inverse of a matrix is unique, right? So if B, uh, if B is a matrix that satisfies this, and C is a matrix that satisfies this. A C is equal to I is equal to C A. A B is equal to I is equal to B A. Both B and C satisfy this. Then you have a condition that B is necessarily equal to C. It can't be any other way, right? And then you have if A and B are invertible matrices, then A B the whole inverse is going to be B inverse A inverse. Right? The same as your uh, this operation, uh, your transpose operation. But yeah. And it says 3.4 as one and only one question, right? Matrices A and B will be inverse of each other only if A, B, C, D, right? So you have matrices A and B are inverse of each other. So basically, B is A inverse, A is B inverse, right? 
of which any one condition holds, then R identifies the other, right? So assume that B is A inverse. This means that AB should be equal to BA, should be equal to the identity matrix I of the same order, right? Therefore, B, it's pretty weird that uh, you only have one percent accessory one four. Because I think the previous versions you also had uh, row and column transformations. So yeah, whatever. That's we end three point four, and we go to the miscellaneous exercises. Right? Look at these examples. These examples are actually really good, right? and uh, some of these results are uh, pretty useful elsewhere also. All right. So just uh, look at some of these examples. I just get to know how many, how different questions can be asked. Also, uh, look at the example of problems for this chapter because they are also really good. All right. right. Uh, therefore, we jump into the miscellaneous problems. And how uh, many there? I have 11. If A and B are symmetric matrices, prove that AB minus BA is a symmetric matrix. I think I've already done that. All right. Have I? This question. Oh, yeah. So A and B are symmetric matrices. Assuming that A and B are the same order, right? This is an assumption that is not explicitly stated, but uh, this is an inherent assumption, right? But uh, you have to, you know, writing this down is a good practice for later. So I have A, B are symmetric matrices. Assuming they are the same order, uh, I just write this an assumption. Assume then uh, a is equal to a dash b is equal to b dash since a and b are symmetric right now we have a b minus b a let this be equal to r right and a new matrix r right now dealing with r dash r dash is basically uh, a b minus b a the whole dash Right? This is basically AB the whole dash minus BA the whole dash, which is basically B dash times A dash minus A dash times B dash, which is BA minus AB, which is minus of AB minus BA. This is not a minus. It's BA minus AB. All right. So we have minus of AB minus BA, which is basically minus R. Therefore, R dash is minus R. Therefore, R is equal to AB minus BA is Q symmetric. Show that the matrix, wait, uh, that's true. So nothing else in question book. And question book. So that the matrix B dash AB is symmetric or Q symmetric according, accordingly as A is symmetric or Q symmetric. This is a really good question. And this property is also uh, useful elsewhere. I don't know that. So we have, uh, I just divide into two cases, right? I'll deal with case one, when A is symmetric. Therefore, A dash is going to be equal to A, right? Let the matrix R equal B dash AB for an arbitrary matrix B. This is going to be arbitrary. This does not have any conditions associated with it. Other than that, it is non-zero. Because if it is zero, then uh, this whole thing is going to be zero and you can prove that it's symmetric and skew symmetric basically. That's going to be very trivial. So we are assuming that it's not zero. Right. And uh, it's arbitrary that's given because there's no condition on B. Right. So your R dash is going to be equal to B dash AB, the whole dash. That is basically B dash A, the whole, wait a minute, uh, this is going to be I just uh, divide this as B dash A times B, all right? So this is going to be B dash into B dash A the whole dash, which is basically B dash into A dash into B dash, where it's B dash the whole dash, that's B, right? I'm just simplifying uh, here, uh, here it's it, right? B dash the whole dash is going to be B. So we have B dash A dash B, that is again going to be B dash A B, right? This is what we started with, that is R itself. Therefore, R is equal to R dash, right? So, uh, B dash AB is R, 
uh, is when a asymmetric data j b k is true. When a is skew symmetric, uh, SKSM means skew symmetric in a short notation, right? A is skew symmetric. Then we have uh, a dash being minus a, right? That is a condition of skew symmetry. Therefore, let R be B dash A B, then R dash is going to be B dash times A dash times B, as I have proved above, right? Which is going to be B dash into minus A into B, right? And this minus propagates out because uh, minus A times B is basically minus of A times B. All right. Uh, uh, if there is a scalar multiplied inside, you can take the scalar out of the multiplicator brackets and this is what happens, going to be the same. Right. This is equal to minus of B dash AB, which is minus R. Therefore, R dash is equal to minus R. Therefore, R is equal to B dash AB, right? Therefore, this statement is true. We have proved. Then go into question number three. Find the values of x, y, z in the matrix. A is 0 to y, z, x, y, minus z, x, minus y, z. Satisfies the equation a dash a is equal to i. All right. So we have a. Let me find out a dash. That is going to be 0 to y, z, x, x. And then you have a y minus z you have a minus y. Now we have a a dash is going to be equal to i, which is uh, which I assume to be i3 because the matrix A is a precursive matrix, right? 0, 0, 1. Okay. And this product, I will basically write down directly as a precursive matrix, right? Uh, just zoom out a bit. Yeah. So we have this row into this column, that is basically 4y squared plus z squared, right? Then you have this column multiplied by this column, that is 2y squared minus z squared, right? Just a moment, I'll erase this. This is going to be 2y squared minus z squared, and you'll have minus 2y squared plus z squared, right? In the first row. Then you will have x1 minus z into this first column. That is going to be minus 2y squared plus z squared. Oh, this is going to be plus 2y squared. I'm sorry for that. It's going to be plus 2y squared minus z squared. Right? Because it is x1 minus z times 0 to y z. And then you will have x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And then you will have x squared minus y square, minus z square. Finally, you will have x minus y z into this. That is going to be minus 2 y square plus z square. This is going to be uh, x square minus y square minus z square. This is going to be x square plus y square plus z square. Right? Because there is an x minus y z into x minus y z. That's the same. Right? This is equal to 100010001. Since you can see that this is symmetric, we only have six equations that are actually distinct. Okay. So first of all, we have that the sum of all three squares, that is x squared plus y squared plus six squared, this is one. We have the fact that 4y squared plus z squared is also one. Right? Then we have our 2y square minus z square and minus 2y square plus z square being 0. And lastly, we have x square minus y square minus z square being also 0. x square minus y square minus z square equals 0. Right? From this, we can get that x square is equal to y square plus z square. Right? Substitute in this, in the first equation, what we get is uh, basically 
टू वाई स्क्वायर प्लस टू जेड स्क्वायर इज गुण भी इक्वल टू वन और वाई स्क्वायर प्लस जेड स्क्वायर इज बेसिकली जीरो पॉइंट फाइव और यू कैन गेट दैट एक्स स्क्वायर बेसिकली जीरो पॉइंट फाइव दस दी फर्स्ट वैल्यू आ दस इन कंजंक्शन में द फैक्ट दैट टू वाई वेन वेन आ इंस्टेड दिस इंस्टेड दिस आ टेक दिस इन कंजंक्शन में द फैक्ट दैट टू वाई स्क्वायर माइनस जेड स्क्वायर इज गुण भी इक्वल टू or 2y square is going to be equal to z square are uh, you have since you have this substituted over here you basically get 3z square is going to be equal to 1 or z square is going to be 1 by 3 therefore y square is going to be 1 by 6 and because y square is half of z square therefore you have x square is 1 by 2 and write this in fraction form x square is 1 by 2 Y squared is one by six, and Z squared is one by three. Right? Therefore, are uh, the values of X is plus or minus one by root two. The values of Y is plus or minus one by root six, and the values of Z are plus or minus one by root three. Is the set of solutions for X, Y, and Z for question number three? Right, so you have basically you have eight possible solutions. That is all plus or uh, three cases of one minus. That is either x is minus one by root two or y is minus one by root six or z is minus one by root three, and the rest are positive. Right, you have three uh, three solutions which have only a, uh, only one positive uh, one positive expression. That is either x is plus root plus one by root two, y is plus one by root six, or z is plus one by root three. And the rest are negative, and then you have one solution which is a non-negative. Right? You have eight solutions. So what values of x does this equation hold? Right? Very simple. Minus one integration of a row into this into this column. Right? First of all, first I'll uh, do left to right instead of right to left. You can do it any way. Doesn't matter, but I prefer doing left to right. Right? So first thing is Uh, one to one multiplied with one to zero, two to zero, one plus is first. Get the uh, get the order. This is one three. This is going to be two two. Right. This is going to be equal. So we'll have a matrix of order one plus three. So we have one to one into one to one. That is going to be one plus four plus one. That is. Six. Then you have one to one times two zero zero. That is going to be two. And finally, you have one to one times zero one two. That is going to be four. Finally, multiply the six to four into the power matrix zero two x. That is going to be equal to six into zero zero two into four four into x four x. Right. Then this is a one plus three, and this is a three plus four matrix. We are going to be left with a one cross one element, a one cross one matrix. There is a single element matrix which has a single element that is going to be equal to zero plus four plus four x. That is, okay. but I am given that this is zero. So basically, we are given that four plus four x is going to be equal to zero, or x is equal to minus one. That is your answer. Is three one minus one two show that a star minus five a plus seven i is perfect. Since a is this, a square is going to be three one minus one two into three one minus one two. That is going to be three one is or uh, this is going to be ah uh, three these are nine minus one that is three. Three ones are three plus two five. Minus three, minus two, that is minus five, and minus one plus four, that is three. Therefore, we have a square minus five a plus seven i two is equal to that is n. Right? This is equal to eight minus five times of three, that is fifteen plus seven. Then you have five minus five. Then you have minus five 
plus five, and then you have uh, this to be three minus r uh, is what five times of two that is what it is two minus ten plus seven. Since I do is one zero zero one. I am adding plus seven over here and plus seven over here and no plus seven. Over here. Perfect. This is going to be equal to eight plus seven is fifteen. Fifteen minus fifteen is zero. Five minus five is zero. Minus five plus five is zero. Three plus seven is ten minus ten is zero. Right? Which is basically all to. Thus, we have proved that a square minus five a plus seven i is equal to zero. Thus, to find x if Uh, this whole thing is going to be equal to zero. Same as question number four, but over here you have two x's, right? So we have we deal with uh, this first, right? Left to right again. So I'm going to be left with a row matrix, right? I'll write this as x minus five minus one into one zero two zero two one two zero three. Tell me the r now. So we have uh, this expression being r times x four one. So your r is going to be uh, this is again a row matrix. Okay, this is going to be one cross three. This is going to be three cross three. So you are going to be left with a one cross three matrix. So which is basically x plus x minus two. This is going to be x minus two. This is going to be x minus zero zero minus ten. And this is going to be x two x minus five minus three. So, so this is basically two x minus. So, ah, uh, this is what x minus two minus ten, two x minus eight, all into x four one. Very good. Right. Therefore, x square minus two x minus forty plus two x minus eight is going to be equal to zero. X square minus four x minus forty eight is going to be equal to zero. So basically, you have uh, you don't have an x over here. Just have x square minus forty eight is zero, or x is equal to plus minus because forty eight is basically sixteen and three. Root of that is four into root three. These are the two values of x for which this matrix equation. That finishes question six. Um, a manufacturer produces three products X Y Z, which is sent to market, and the sales are indicated below. Right? So these are going to be the sales of each product in each different market. All right. In matrix form, that is going to be a two plus three matrix, which is ah ten thousand. Then you have six thousand. So have two thousand. Let this be the matrix A. The actual sales. Now we have the fact that the prices, the sale prices of X, Y, Z. This is X. This is Y. This is Z, right? So the unit sale prices of X, Y, Z are going to be two point five, one point five, and one. And this X, this Y, this Z. Find the total revenue in each market with the help of matrix stuff. So basically, the total revenue in each market is going to be the product A, P. Which is basically ten thousand, six thousand, or two thousand, twenty thousand, eighteen thousand, and eight thousand multiplied by the fourth matrix that is two point five, one point five, and one. This is equal to this is the two cross one matrix. This is the three cross one matrix. So basically, we have a two cross one matrix. One column, which is basically ten thousand and two point five. That is our uh, uh, plus two thousand into one point five. That is three thousand. So you have an add of ah uh, this is basically two five double zero, and then this is going to be three thousand plus three thousand plus this is eighteen thousand, and then you have six ah. Uh, You have six thousand times two point five. Six hundred two point five is basically ah uh, what four is ten. Six is four point five. So this is going to be fifteen thousand plus this is twenty thousand and one point five. That gives you thirty thousand. Twenty five plus eighteen is forty three, and forty three plus three is forty six. 
So you have a net revenue in market one of 46,000 rupees, which is an implied unit over here. They must say multiplying the cost. And over here you have 10 plus 30, that's 40, we'll say it is 48. So you have a net revenue of 46,000 in market one. Wait a minute. It's not 10, it's 15. 600 is 15, right? So this is not 48. So we have a net revenue in market one of 46,000. And a net revenue, I'll just write this down. Uh, the net, uh, net revenue in market one is 46,000. In market two, it is going to be these. That finishes part one. Part B is that the unit costs of the amount of commodities are 2, 1, and 50 paise and the gross profit. So the cost price C is going to be the matrix 2, 1, 0 0.5. And the gross 50 paise is 0 0.5. So the net cost, right, the net cost NC is going to be A times C, the number of products purchased into the cost of each product. Right. That is going to be the matrix R uh, 10K. Uh, K is 1000. All right. Uh, there's a shorthand for uh, since I don't want to uh, keep writing to those matrix. Right. 68, 20K, and then 8K. This times 21, 0.5 is the answer. This is equal to a two plus one matrix that is a twenty k plus two k plus nine k, and this is six hundred two. That's twelve k plus twenty k plus four k. This is equal to this is twenty plus eleven. That's twenty point four. While here it is thirty two plus four. Is, now we have the cost matrix. We have the sale price matrix, right? Let this be our uh, selling price itself. All right. So we have a net sales, we have net profit, a net cost. Therefore, the profit per market that is uh, basically NS minus NC, right? Because of the selling price minus the cost price for one item. And for a multiple uh, for a multitude of items, it's going to be the net selling price minus the net cost price, right? Net sales minus the net cost. That is basically since we have a matrix of two this uh, two markets over here, we will make this 46 and 53, 46,000 and 53,000 minus this is going to be 31,000, 36,000. That is basically equal to this is what 15,000 and this is 70,000. Your gross profit GP is going to be this 15 plus 17k, which is basically rupees 32,000, right? Because gross profit is basically the profit in all markets combined, it's not a big profit in each single market. What we do here is we ca calculate the profit for each single market by calculating the pro uh, cost price in each market and the selling price in each market, and then subtracting the selling price, uh, cost price from the selling price, that is NS minus NC, to get the profit in each market, right? And summing up all the profits, you get the gross profit, that is basically 32 k or 32,000. That finishes. Find the matrix X such that X times one, two, three, four, five, six is going to be equal to minus seven, minus eight, minus nine, and two, four, six. So over here, you have a two cross three matrix and you have a two cross three matrix, right? This matches with this. Let X have uh, an order P cross Q. Then we know that Q is equal to two and P has to be equal to this two, right? Therefore, X is the matrix of order two cross two, right? Let X be matrix A, B, C, D. 
right? Let x be equal to this. Uh, let x equals this matrix. Then what we do is multiply this matrix A, B, C, D with uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This should get you six items. That is A plus 4B, then 2A plus 5B, and 3A plus 6B. Right? And over here, you will have C plus 4D. Then you will have 2C plus 5D. Then you will have 3C plus 6D. So, we write the equations. A plus 4B is going to be equal to minus 7. 2A plus 5B is going to be equal to minus 8. Then C plus 4D is going to be equal to 2. 2C plus 5D is going to be equal to 4. From this, we get that uh, doing second equation minus the first equation, we get A plus B is equal to minus 1. Plugging this value over here, we get uh, minus 1 plus 3B is going to be equal to minus 7. Right? Or 3B is going to be equal to minus 6. So it's going to be minus 6. So therefore, 3B is minus 6, which implies B is minus 2. And from these two, we basically get C plus D is equal to 2, right? Which means that 3D plus 2 is equal to 2. Plugging this over here and writing it here. Therefore, D is 0. Since B is minus 2, plugging this value over here, I basically get A is equal to 1. And since D is 0, plugging this value over here, I get C is equal to 2. Therefore, X is basically, this is 2, this is 0, this is, uh, this is 1, this is minus 2. X is 1 minus 2, 2, 0. Then you have three multiple choice questions. That the chapter ends. So second answer. Nine. If A is alpha, beta, gamma, and minus alpha, such that A squared is I, then all right. So we have A being A squared. Wait. Uh, let me draw the matrix A squared. That is alpha, beta, gamma, minus alpha times cross alpha, beta, gamma, minus alpha. Right. Which is basically alpha square plus beta gamma. This is alpha beta minus beta alpha that is zero. This is going to be gamma alpha minus alpha gamma. This is also going to be zero. And this is going to be beta gamma plus alpha square. Right? This is going to be equal to i. That is one zero zero. Therefore, alpha square plus beta gamma is going to be equal to one. Or alpha square plus beta gamma minus 1 is going to be equal to 0. That is the required equation, right? Or you can write 1 minus alpha square minus beta gamma is going to be equal to 0. So your answer 10. If the matrix A is both symmetric and skew symmetric, then A is a 0 matrix, right? Which is a square matrix and a diagonal matrix, right? Nobody said that a diagonal matrix cannot be 0, uh, cannot have an all 0 diagonal. Right. So A, B, C, all are actually correct. Right. If you if you are asked this question in a multiple correct question type, then you are going to mark all three answers A, B, C as correct. Right. If it's going to be a single answer correct, then B is going to be the most correct answer. So you are going to mark. B. Then finally, you have if A is a square matrix such that A squared is equal to A, then I plus A the whole cube minus seven is equal to. A. Right. So this the last question question number eleven. You have a square is equal to a. Then i plus a, the whole q, is going to be equal to i plus a into i plus a into i plus a, right? The order does not matter because it's associative. Uh, let's first uh, do this, right? So this is going to be i into i, that is going to be i square plus this is going to be i times a, that is going to be a because i is a multiplicative identity, right? 
this is going to be a times i that is again going to be a plus a times a that is going to be a squared times i plus a so this is going to be i squared plus 2a plus a squared times i plus a which is basically i cube plus r this is what 2a plus a square plus a into i square uh, before i proceed further let me just tell you that i square right 1001 into 1001 is basically equal to this is 10 into 10 that is going to be 1 this 10 into 0, 01 that is going to be 0 this is going to be 0 this is going to be 1 right i square is basically equal to i so you basically have uh, this to be uh, instead of i cube of i cube you can basically write this as i right because i squared is i and i into i is basically i squared that is again equal to i right this is i plus uh, 3a plus 3 times a squared plus a cube therefore i plus a the whole cube minus 7a which is what is asked in the question is equal to this uh, basically translates to i plus a the whole cube minus 7a is equal to a cube plus 3a squared minus 4a plus i. Now we have the fact that a squared is a. So uh, this is basically 3 into a, right? This is equal to a into a squared plus 3a minus 4a plus i which is basically a into a minus a plus i, right? Because a squared is a, I'm basically substituting that, right? 3a minus 4a becomes minus a, right? This is a squared. This is basically a squared. This is equal to a. So I'm basically writing this as this is equal to a, uh, a minus a plus i, which is basically i. So C is your answer. We complete matrices, right? Uh, we go to the uh, you know. look at the summary because again as in previous chapters that I have taken uh, the summary is going to have uh, all the formulae very concisely and it's going to have all the properties uh, all the important properties right but you also have to go through the index because there are some examples that are uh, very very important uh, which may also be asked verbatim in your CBSE test right uh, it won't be asked verbatim in JE or NEET so this is going to be uh, useful if you want to revise for you. So with this, we complete matrices. Right. Uh, this is Anirudh signing off. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day.